everybody. What is up? Happy Friday. Welcome to the DIY Designer. For those of you that are new, my name's Orly. I'm so glad that you found me. Um, this video was super last minute. <laughs> I mean, <sighs> I usually plan these things out. Today was not the case. But then I got a text from my sister. Now, my sister is like gorgeous and glamorous and one of the most fashionable people I know in the world, but a DIYer? Usually she is not and she sent me a photo of this like gorgeous t-shirt that she made and it had this Really soft like pale blush pink and these little crinkles of like a warm rosy mauve tone I mean, it was so gorgeous. It was such a cool shirt and she told me she used avocado skins and avocado pits My mind exploded and naturally it sent me down the deep dark rabbit hole of natural food dyes And that is what we're gonna do today. I gotta say real quick. I have a hack beyond all hacks. In order to get that really beautiful darker tone, whether you want it all over or you want it in these little crinkly spots, kind of like hers, I have a hack for how to get those dark tones and it does not include letting your pot simmer for like 12 and a half years and reducing and adding all these things to it to adjust the pH and all this crazy stuff that I read online. I take a crack at using some other foods um, and I'm gonna show you everything that worked and everything that didn't, so that's it. I can't wait for you guys to watch this one. As always, comment, let me know what you think, ask me any questions. You guys can always find me as well on Instagram. It's at Orly Shani. I would say commenting on my most recent photo is the best way since DM sometimes get hidden. I don't have a material shot today because again, this was sort of a last minute thought. So we're just going to get right into the DIY. All right, guys, I love you. Thank you for being here. I hope everyone's doing well and staying safe. Mwah, mwah, mwah. All right, so the first thing I thought I was going to do was beets. I bought some red and yellow beets, and I saved the stems, too, because they look like they had a lot of color. I started off by just boiling it, but once I looked at the color, I didn't like it. It was kind of brown, and I wasn't digging it, so I made a beet salad. Guys, this is the most delicious salad. Take your beets, peel them, and dice them up. You can add in some arugula, goat cheese, glazed pecans, and put it all in a bowl. Then I grilled some shrimp in a cast iron skillet, got nice and crispy on all the edges, diced it up, threw it in, add some olive oil, salt, and pepper, it was amazing. Okay, now on to the actual DIY. So you can see this is what the avocados look like once you clean them. You have to clean all of the pits and the skin so there's no avocado on them. If you put them in the freezer to store, the color already starts to change. So you can see the difference between the fresh avocados and the skins that have sat in the freezer. So I made two different batches. I made one with my fresh skins and one with my dried skins that had been in the freezer and the color definitely gets richer for the ones in the freezer. You can see that color there. Well, while those are simmering, you leave them on for quite a few hours, I decided to make like a turmeric bath. So I literally just put a ton of water in and put a ton of turmeric in and put it on the stove and let it simmer. While those were all sitting on the stove, I decided to tie up my teas. Now this is just a simple white tea and I wanted to do the crumple technique on this. You literally just crumple it up and put rubber bands on it. Just remember that the tighter you crumple it and the tighter you put the rubber bands, the less dye you're actually going to have. So just keep that in mind. I grabbed a sweater next and this one, it's a rib sweater where the lines are vertical. So I kind of thought I would just stick with that. So I just sort of scrunched it up in vertical lines, added some rubber bands. When you get to the center of something like this, it can be easier to use a tie instead of rubber bands because it's sort of hard to like make the rubber bands tight in the middle. Tie it up, move it off to the side. Now, this is a sweatshirt, and I wanted to do the spiral. What I have always noticed is that the stronger spiral is the one that's facing down. So I always like to make the front of my sweatshirt facing flat. That way, when I spiral it and I dye it, the front always has like a stronger spiral than the back. To me, that always works. So you're just gonna twist it and tie it. Now, remember, all of these clothes are wet. I wash them all and put them right out of the wash, so they're all still damp. That's super important when you're dyeing. Now, for this white tee, I didn't know what I wanted. I just literally started like, like grabbing a section and putting a rubber band, grabbing another section and putting a rubber band. It wasn't really thought through. I just basically created a bunch of knots and then threw that one off to the side. Now, this is my last one. This is my white linen blazer. I really wanted to mix my avocado and my turmeric, kind of like this tea. I thought creating sort of an ombre effect would be super pretty on this blazer. So I opened it up flat and then kind of just like gathered it up. Again, remember, the more you gather it and the tighter you do it, the more of the original color is going to show through and the less the dye is actually going to get to it. So you don't need to actually tie this one up at all. I accidentally started going without filming. So basically all I was doing was taking my sweater, putting it on a plastic bin so that the dye doesn't get all over the floor and the table, and I was just pouring it from the pot. 
didn't have as much control with that. So I ended up just getting a tiny little cup, scooping out the uh, dye and just pouring it directly onto the sweater. Now at the bottom of the dye, a lot of the powder is still there. Like it didn't fully dissolve. So sometimes I kind of smooshed it in, smooshed in all of the powder and really incorporated it and then just moved it off to the side to let it dry. Now this is what the avocado looks like. I had it simmering for about three or four hours and this is the color I got. It wasn't as saturated as I hoped. And when I poured it on, I like looked at it. I was like, seriously, like it barely was anything. It was like beige. That was really all that the color was. So I doused the whole thing and realized, you know what, maybe I need to soak it. So I went back into the kitchen. I strained out all of my avocado seeds in pits. You can see they kind of like fall apart. And I decided to dunk it. Before I add the tea, I wanted to start with the jacket. So basically this is the top half of my jacket that I'm submerging completely into the dye bath. Put it in, submerge it, and you're gonna let it sit. Then I went and grabbed my t-shirt and I added that in and just kind of moved this off to the side. Figured I would both let them sit in the dye bath for about 20 minutes and see what happens. Now, this is my spiral sweatshirt. This sweatshirt started off as a pale blue, so I was curious to see how the colors would sort of, what they would turn like when they mix with that pale blue. But basically what I did is I sprinkled the turmeric on, directly on, just the powder, not a dye bath. And because I didn't have enough berries to actually make a dye bath, I thought like maybe I could just smush the berries in and dye it that way because I only had like six. So I used blackberries, then I grabbed some frozen raspberries, which were already sort of defrosted, so they smushed in really nicely. My blueberries were totally frozen, rock hard, so I put them in some warm water to defrost them, but realized that the water itself actually turned a beautiful color. So I poured it on. I have no idea whether this is going to work or not. I just am smushing the berries in. I'm hoping that I'm hoping that I'm going to get a really beautiful color from them. Once you do one side, just flip it over and do the same to the other side. Obviously, you know the drill. It looks disgusting. I mean, it's disgusting. <laughs> I wanted to do uh, wine, you guys, and I dropped the bottle on my way outside. I couldn't believe that happened. So I took my white v-neck that I just sort of tied up and just soaked up the wine off the floor. I don't know. Thought I would give it a shot. Now, here is my avocado shirt. I strained it out and when I looked at it, I was like, man, there is just like so little color on this. I was really bummed out. So I moved it off to the side and did the same, you know, pulled out my blazer and I decided in order to dye my blazer, it was much smarter to sort of pour it down. That way it doesn't like pool up in the back and accidentally get my avocado section dyed with turmeric as well. So I dyed the bottom half with the turmeric, let that sort of drip onto a bin and put the top half back inside my avocado bath to try to get more color. This was a last minute thing. I basically just like accordioned up an old table runner that I had and folded it in half, laid it in what was left over of my turmeric, kind of flipped it, laid the other side and left the middle white. So everything is in the sun. Now this, you guys, is the most important part. This is the hack for getting that beautiful color. If you leave it in the sun, it is gonna start to change color. Everything that's exposed will change color and you'll see it in just a minute. The turmeric, because I know the color is strong, after about three hours of sitting out in the sun, I decided to rinse off and wash most of my items that had just turmeric. Same with my blazer. I didn't want the turmeric to be much more saturated than the avocado, so I just rinsed it. I didn't wash the whole thing, but I just kind of rinsed the turmeric off the bottom half. Now here is my sweatshirt, I mean my uh, sweater, excuse me. When I opened it up, there was a lot more white than I wanted. I didn't want nearly as much white and I also felt like it was in kind of a weird spot, like on the bust, it was gonna look weird. So while it was still wet, I just took my powder, sprinkled it on all over and just kind of incorporated more yellow into that sweatshirt. Now here you can see, this has been sitting in the sun. That's my avocado tea. Like look at the color. It's starting to get this really cool like berry color, but it happens when it's in the sun. You wanna let it basically dry in the sun and constantly rotate it so that you're getting even color throughout. That is how you activate this bright color. Now it was just before night and I knew I wasn't gonna wash it, but I just wanted to see what was happening. And you can see that bold color really comes from the sun. Otherwise, it's just a pale blush. Here is my wine tea. Again, you can see the bold bursts are where the sun exposed it. It was kind of a pretty color, right? Now, the blazer, I was super bummed when I opened it. I was like, 
come on. It was just like, there was so much more white than I wanted. I, I just wasn't thinking, obviously, that if I tied it up, there would be so much white. So I laid it back flat, added more of the avocado because you're going to want to save your bath for touch-ups, added more to the top, sprinkled a little bit more onto the bottom while it was open, and just let everything sit overnight. Now, this is my berry tea. Oh, uh, you just forget how little color you actually get when you do a spiral. I was sort of looking at it like I have no idea if this is going to look like anything, but let's take a look. Guys, the avocado tea. It's so good. It's so like soft and pretty and pink. I'm completely obsessed with it. Now, you can see the overall color is this super soft pale pink, like the perfect pale blush. It's gorgeous. Everywhere that I have that richer color, you can see this kind of mauve pink tone that's throughout, that is where the sun exposed it. So when it's crinkled and it's in the sun, those areas are going to pick up all of that dark. So the more open it is, the more of this color you have. The more tight you kind of wrap it and tie it and have it, the less of that color you're going to have. So one option, and I actually think I might do it, is I saved my entire avocado bath. And I really recommend doing that, saving the dye. Because now if I want, I can redunk the shirt in the dye. I can either lay it completely flat so the whole thing gets more color, or I could sort of recrinkle it, exposing different parts of the tea the second time around. And you can see I ended up doing that after I finished this video. I dunked it in the dye one more time and then put it in the sun. And you can see, I mean, it, I don't know, double, triple, quadruples in color. The extra color really works. So if you want a richer color, all you have to do is dunk it again and leave it in the sun one more time. But man, I think it's really cool. It's so pretty. It's so soft. It looks like watercolor tie-dye. I'm super into it. Super into it. Guys, take a look. This is our turmeric and avocado blazer. How weird does that sound? Man, it came out so great. I'm so, so excited. The colors, they just like fade and blend gorgeously. You don't actually lose that much color in the wash. You kind of want to watch it and let it really get to the right color. You're only going to lose a little bit in the wash, especially the places that sort of turn a little darker. All of these places is how it was folded up again, right? So this is where the sun really hit it and really darkened that color. But if it's got these gorgeous lines. I mean, I just think it's so pretty. I mean, this was just like a blazer I got at the thrift store for like a couple of bucks. Just a plain white blazer. I'm so into it. I'm so glad that I saved it for this project because I think it really is special and very, very cool. Tell me this isn't the most gorgeous yellow ever. It's perfect. And you know what's really cool about it is that, again, because I laid this in the sun as well, the bright like sort of sun yellow of the turmeric gets a little bit darker and like brown undertones that come out and it's really slight. It's only in a few places. And so it really creates this like, it makes it look more like it was tie dyed and not dyed. I mean, I'm into it, man. I think it is super cool. This was just a, again, kind of a boring white gap sweater that I found at the thrift store. And it just really works out beautifully. Like how that worked out that that's just like a lighter pop. Like what are the chances? But it just lays really nice. One of my like favorite hacks for sweaters is if it's like a longer sweater, take the bottom and you can tuck it into your bra to make it like kind of a cropped bubbly sweater. Ooh. This is the, co the runner that I made. So like it really, you can see, we go together quite nicely, don't we? Still has pretty sharp colors. So even though when I washed it, excess turmeric came off and it was all in the wash and there was turmeric in the water, what was cream originally still kind of stayed pretty cream. I think it looks really cool. This looks like something you would see at like World Market or something like that. I mean, really, really pretty. Like how cute would that be as a little pillow? Ah, so cute. All right, this is one of my favorites. I gotta say, beautiful. Highly recommend the turmeric. It's so easy. The color is so saturated. It really is gorgeous. Okay, so I'm torn on this one. Very little color stuck around. Obviously, by doing the spiral, you always forget how little is how little color is actually being deposited because it's just on those ridges. So there's a couple changes I would have made here. Number one, I would have opened up each fold and added more color so that the spiral that I do have would have been more intense. Number two, the berries basically didn't work at all. I didn't rinse this off in the sink before I washed it. So there was a lot of turmeric on it. So when the turmeric washed, 
This was originally a pale blue, like cloudy color. The turmeric sort of dyed the whole thing, so it became almost like a green, which again, like, I don't know if it's bad. It's actually really pretty. It's just not at all what I originally planned on. So like, that's one of the things, like see, I mean, the color is really cool actually, but it's just one of those things to remember that when you're doing stuff like this, like who knows what's gonna happen. It might work out perfectly, it might not. I might end up using some real dye, like um, not natural dyes, and add some fun colors into it, like maybe like a little bit of a blue, maybe a little bit of burgundy, and just kind of add in a couple of pops, but it is really pretty. Like all this is super cool, you know, like all that. That's really gorgeous. Can you even guess what this was? This was the wine. Uh, what? It was like dark purple, especially because I put it in the sun. Nope, it turned gray. So if you want to make a really pretty pale gray, you can use red wine. It is, it is a really nice like soft color. I'll totally keep the tea and wear it. It's just not at all what I thought it was gonna be. Okay, so let's recap. Basically, turmeric, hands down, probably the easiest choice. It's foolproof, it works no matter what. You can put it in water and dunk your clothes, you can sprinkle it onto wet clothes, you can put it in the sun, you don't have to put it in the sun, really, it's foolproof. Avocado, super into it, but I do think it needs that sun exposure. To me, the color on its own is such a pale pink that you barely even notice it. It's pretty, but it's just so, so subtle. So to me, I think letting it get in that sun and letting it expose is really cool. The berries, I did not have good success with. However, I didn't make a dye bath out of them. I just kind of rubbed the actual fruit and the skins on there. So none of that took, but maybe if we actually like dyed it and boiled it into a dye bath, maybe that would work. The wine turns gray. So if you want gray, wine is a good one. Um, but otherwise, turmeric and avocado, man, I am super into it. I hope that you guys liked this video. If you did, can I ask a huge favor? Would you share it with a friend? Either share the link or screenshot whatever device you're looking at right now, post it to your social media, tag me, really would help, uh, help the channel grow and I'd appreciate it so, so much. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I love you and I will see you next week. Bye.